In Lesson 4, we'll begin building our customer table. Now that we know our way around the Access interface, let's build our first table. Go back to your index cards and find the card for your customer table. These are all the fields that we're going to add to the table in our database. Now there are multiple ways to create a table. Click on the Create tab, and here you'll see Table and Table Design. Now the first option, Table, puts you in Datasheet view, and this is what Access started in when we built our database. Datasheet view lets you type in data first and then define the fields later. Kind of like a spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet. You can type in Joe, Smith, and so on, and then later define your fields. Personally, I find this backwards. I feel that one of the strong points about access is that you define the table first, specify the type of data that each field is going to include, then add data to it. So I don't like this method. I'm going to close this table. Access asks me if I want to save changes. I'll say no. And that puts me back to a blank database window. So I'm going to click on Create and then Table Design. This lets you design a table first by specifying the field names and the data types. And then when you're done designing the table, you can go in and put the data into it. It's better to structure the table first, then add data. Now, spreadsheet programs like Microsoft Excel are great for certain purposes, but anybody can just type anything they want anywhere without any rules. And yes, you can set up some kinds of basic validations in here. But the benefit of an access database is that you specify a structure to your data first. With access, we can set up specific rules and control what types of data go where. Now, when building a table, you need to specify two things. First, the field name. What's the name of the bit of data that you're storing? For example, first name, last name, phone number, and so on. Next is the data type. What kind of data is this? Is it text, number, currency, a date time field? There are lots of different data types, and this gives you some control over the kind of information typed into this field. The user couldn't type in blue if it's a number field. And finally, you can type in an optional description. This will tell the user what kind of data is going into this field. For example, I showed you earlier, the description said, this is the customer's first name, and it appeared down on the status bar. So let's start off by typing in our first field name. I'm going to say first name with no spaces. Remember, I don't like using spaces in my field names or my table names, or any of the objects in my database, like my queries, forms, and reports. It gets much harder to work with field names and object names that have spaces in them when you start building queries and you get into programming. Because anything that has a space in it, you have to remember to put square brackets around, and it's a big pain. So trust me, keep all of your field names without any spaces in them. Now this is really kind of a personal preferred style option. This is how I like to spell my field names. Capital first, no space, capital N for name. This type of naming convention is very popular with Visual Basic programmers. Again, avoid putting spaces in your field names. If you have a space there, then when we get into more advanced query design, form design, some Visual Basic programming, you'll have to remember to put square brackets around your field names all the time. And that, again, is a pain. Access is not case sensitive. So lowercase first name, uppercase first name, or if you capitalize the F and the N like I do, it really doesn't matter to access. The only thing that matters is that this is a little more difficult to read than this. The capitalization of the individual words just makes it easier for you to see what that is. You might see some other developers use underscores. That's perfectly fine. An underscore character is okay. This is a popular naming convention with C programmers, for example. You can use hyphens in your field names, but again, I don't recommend it. Hyphens can sometimes be confused with subtraction, so you might want to avoid using hyphens. As a general rule of thumb, I like to only use letters and numbers and nothing else. Don't use any fancy symbols. 
percent signs, pound symbols, all those things. Don't use those in your field names. Sometimes you can get away with it, but I don't recommend it. You may see some book authors use this type of notation. This is called Hungarian notation. It's essentially first name with a prefix that tells you what kind of data this is. This, for example, is text first name. It's okay if you want to use this type of notation. I personally don't bother. Most of my field names are self-explanatory. I know that first name holds a text value, for example. I know that number of children would be a number value. Credit limit would be a currency value, and so on. So choose one method of naming your fields and try to maintain some consistency. There are also certain key words to watch out for that you shouldn't name your fields. Name, for example, is a reserved word. Access uses that for its own internal purposes. So don't make a field just called name. Other reserved words, date, left, those are the names of functions. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole list of them right now. We'll talk more about these in the future, but just keep this in mind. You want to try and make your field names as descriptive as possible. First name for a customer, for example. Order date instead of just date for an order. Amount left instead of left. Very short field names, A, tend to be difficult for you to remember what they are later, and B, possibly might be reserved words. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got our first name field. Now I'm going to press the tab key to move over to the data type column. Now you can see the data type that is the default option is called short text. If you drop this box down, you'll see the complete list of data types available in Microsoft Access. The first data type, and probably the most popular one, the one you're going to use most of the time, is called short text. Short text fields can be letters, upper and lower case, numbers, and most other printable characters. Most of the characters on the keyboard can be stored in a short text value. Short text fields can be from 1 to 255 characters long. So you can use a short text field to store most types of data. First name, last name, address, all those kinds of things. Now short text fields used to be called text fields, just text, in Access 2010 and before. They just changed this in Access 2013. So if you hear me refer to something as a text field, I really mean short text field. It's going to take me a while to get used to this. The next data type is called long text. Whereas short text fields are limited to 255 characters, long text fields can be very, very long. They can be up to 65,000 characters long. So you can store a lot of information in a long text field. Long text fields also support formatted text. So if you want to add some color or bold or a font change, you can do that with a long text field. Long text fields are great for notes, and in some of my more advanced classes, I show you how to actually make a letter writer, where you can type in a letter, just like you would in Microsoft Word, but store it in a long text field, and then print it and send it out to the customer right from inside of your Access database. Now, why wouldn't you use long text for everything? Well, they take up more space in your database, first of all, but short text fields have some additional functionality that long text fields don't. Short text fields, for example, can be indexed to speed up searches and sorts, and that's just one benefit of short text fields. Now, long text fields used to be called memo fields back in 2010 and before. So again, if you hear me refer to a memo field or even a notes field, I really mean a long text field. Why Microsoft decided to make the change, I don't know, but they did. Basically, my rule of thumb is this. For short bits of data, use short text. If you need to type in lots and lots of stuff, like a whole paragraph about a service call or some directions to get to a customer's house, that's the kind of stuff that goes into a long text field. Next, we have numbers. Numbers can store either counting numbers, integer values, for example, or decimals, floating point values. Numbers are best used for bits of data that you need to perform calculations on. If you need to calculate the sum or the average of some field, you'd want to store that into a number field. 
a date time field can store either a date or a time or both together. So you can store January 1st, 1980 or 4.55 p.m. or both at the same time, January 1st, 1980 at 4.55 p.m. You can be as specific as you want. Currency is a special data type that is optimized for working with dollars and cents or whatever your local currency happens to be. A yes-no data type stores what's called a Boolean value. True, false, on, off, yes, no. Next, we have a very important data type called auto number. Auto number is an automatic counter that starts at one and counts up with each successive record that you add. So the first customer you add to the database is customer one, then customer two, then three, and so on. You don't have to worry about incrementing that number yourself. Access takes care of it for you. It's important that each record in your table has a unique identifier, some kind of an ID field. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes. An auto number is the perfect way to make sure that there's an ID for each record that is unique because it can't repeat. Next we have OLE object. An OLE object is basically anything you can copy and paste in Windows. You can insert a picture, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, a video, all kinds of stuff can be put into OLE objects. I don't use these much because embedding objects inside your database tends to make it really, really big, and a big database is a slow database. So I try not to use these when possible, but I will show you how they work in a future class. Attachments are very similar to OLE objects. You can take a file of any type and attach it to your database, and it's actually compressed and stored inside your database. Again, I don't use them much. I'll explain why in a future class. A hyperlink field is great for storing either the location of a web page or an email address. If the user clicks on that link, it will either load up their web browser and bring them right to that page, or load up their email program and send an email to that person. A calculated field performs some kind of a calculation and stores that result in the table. For example, sale price minus unit cost equals profit. I tend not to use calculated fields because calculations can be performed on the fly inside of queries. And we'll go over which one is better in a future class. Finally, we have the lookup wizard. The lookup wizard allows you to select a value from another table. For example, you could select a customer while you're in the order table. Personally, I don't like lookup wizards. Lookup wizards were added by Microsoft recently to make lookups easier for Novus users. There's a much, much better way to handle lookups using combo boxes on forms, and I will explain that in a future class. Yes, yes, I know I've said that a couple times, that I'll teach you something in a future class. Remember, today's lessons are just about the absolute basics of building a database and access. Lookup wizards are a lot more advanced than we're going to cover today. So I'm showing you all the different data types to expose you to them, but we're only going to cover a couple of them today. So now that we know all the different data types and what they do, which one makes the most sense for first name? Well, it's short text, of course, so I'll select short text. Now you can optionally type in a description over here if you want. Personally, I almost never use them. If I'm building a database for an absolute computer novice and I want to make sure they can see that description in the status bar at the bottom, I might put something like a customer's first name in here. But I almost never use those. And you can come back later if you want to and put descriptions in here. For me, the only way I usually use the description field is if a field name is ambiguous. For example, what if I've got a field name called active? What does that mean? The customer likes to exercise a lot? No, it means he's on our mailing list and he's an actively purchasing customer. So I can explain that in the description field. Now, if you're building a database with someone else, you're working on a small team, for example, you may want to use those description fields more often so they know what your field names are. One of the most difficult things as an access consultant is to take someone else's database and to try and figure out what some of their field names mean. Okay, so the next field, let's go with last name. Tab, 
short text is the default, tab, tab. It's that easy to set up text fields. Do you want middle name or middle initial or prefix and suffix like junior, senior, that kind of thing? That's completely up to you. This is your database. You build it however you want to build it. For the purposes of class, I'm just going to go with first name and last name, which honestly is all I usually track in my databases. That's all I care about for my customers. Continuing on, I'm going to type in a company name field. That's also short text. Let's go with address. Short text as well. Now, I've always been happy with a single address field. Some people like address 1 and address 2. As I mentioned before, some people break it down into the street number, the street name, the street type. Is it a circle, drive, avenue, whatever? Again, this is completely up to you. Your short text fields can store up to 255 characters. And there is a way, if you want to put a line break in there, that you can do that. So you can actually have two lines in one address field. And I'll show you how to do that in a future class. But for me personally, in my databases, I've always been happy with just address. Okay, how about city, state, and postal code. Now you can change these based on your country. For example, in Canada, you'd want a province here instead of state. Or you may not have a postal code in your country. Here in the U.S., we call it a zip code, but postal code is fine. Whatever you want to call them. I'll also add a country field in here. If you do business outside of your own country, that's necessary. Now, for me, I'm in the United States. So for another U.S. customer, I'll just leave country blank. I won't bother putting that in. If they're in a foreign country, then I'll type the country name in. Now, so far, we've only seen text fields. In the next lesson, we'll continue working with this customer table, and we'll talk about some of the different field types.